Hi, this is Pavel and this is part two of our uh, little exercise uh, where we're doing the uh, bunch of searches, linear and binary search and some sorting for bubble and selection sort. In the previous video we kind of created the skeleton of our class. So we continue to actually now coding the logic of the searches and the sorting. So let's start with the easiest one, which is a linear search. Basically what it means that uh, we'll go through the numbers, uh, if, we, if you look at them, you're looking for 26, which is here, and we'll simply go, okay, this uh, one number at a time and asking the question, is this number equal to the one that we're looking for, which is 26? No, this one, no, 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 until we come here and it says, yeah, 26 equals 26. So we got the number and uh, that's how many steps the linear search will uh, take. Now, if 26 was right at the beginning, it would only take one step. If it was at the end, in this case, it would, took, it would take 20 steps because that's 20 numbers. So the logic is very simple for linear search. We will simply do four and do a for loop i equals zero. Uh, i is less than number of elements. Again, as from the previous video, the number of elements in our case is 20, but this is expandable beyond 20. Uh, if you hard coded it, you would have to go through all these codes. The, all these will have a loop with the number of elements as number of iterations, and you would have to be changing it one by one. In this case, all you have to do is change one number, one line of code, and it will still work. So that's why it's better not to hard code these uh, number of uh, in the loops, but use the variables instead. So we looping through all our numbers, and remember we're supposed to keep count of how many steps it took to uh, find the find a number. So once we're here. The first thing we need to do is increase the counter. The counter initialized at zero, but when we start looking, that's gonna be changed to one. And then if it's not that number, then it will change to two and so forth. And uh, inside the loop, all we have to do is just a simple if statement. If the numbers with the index of i equals to the searched value, so when we find that value, we will exit the the whole method because we found the value and the counter will hold the final number of steps that uh, that it took to find the number we are not interested in actually we know what the number we're looking for is it's number 26 in this exercise so we're not really interested in anything else we're only interested in finding out how many steps it took and this is uh this is how you do it. Uh, we can actually test it right away. We can go to our main method. And uh, in a main, first that we need to declare is a constant called number of, I'll, I'll just call it number of elements. And in this case, it's 20. But like I said, if you ever change it, all you have to do is come over here and change this number and it will still work. Now, I'm also creating a constant for the searched value searched value and in this case we are looking for number 26 in our numbers so uh, we can change this and uh, have the program work fine so this is the first element if you remember the element one is uh, using a linear search so uh, I can simply uh, start doing the search but first thing I need to do is uh, get the numbers from the text file into our array so uh, let's do that and that's very simple that's going to be uh, we're gonna declare a, an array well actually no, no we don't need to let's do a using statement and we will be using a, a stream reader to read uh, data from the text file so we will do variable sr equals new stream reader and the paths to mine uh, actually you know what I, I can do that as a constant as well over here constant string uh, 
path uh, and it will equal to the name of the of the file which I called numbers.txt so if it ever changes instead of hard coding it here again I can just come over here and uh, change that so all I have to do is just uh, call the path which we, uh, since I have it in my uh, bin debug folder the all I have to do is just write the name of the uh, text file because there is no other path it's directly in the debug folder so when the folder gets compiled it will have access to the numbers.txt all right so that's uh, that's the stream reader now we the numbers are in a file separated by a space so uh, what we have to do we have to uh, use a split function to uh, get the numbers out one at a time without a space so I will create a variable called line which is going to be an array of strings and uh, it will it will have the number of elements in it as part of uh, that's how many elements it will have so in other words in this case 20 so uh, that's uh, that's a array called line because in this case it's only one line but it could be you know other lines and we could go and search for for more like one at a time but uh, this one will hold the numbers 20 it will have basically 20 indexes the one index will be one number so index 0 will be 24 index 1 will be 80 index uh, 19 because since we start from 0 it will be 44 so we'll do a simple while loop while the it's not the end uh, not st but sr dot end of stream we will uh, we will pass the values to our line we will read the line uh, read line and we will split it by a space a character space so like that so basically what this goes uh, is going to do it's like a loop on its own it goes through the through the whole line finds a space and the element or the in this case the number before the space will be placed into an index then it goes to the next one finds a space the number before that will be placed to the index so at the end line will simply hold 20 indexes with all these numbers with no spaces but line uh, is a string at this moment but we want an integer because we don't have numbers so we'll have to convert it uh, later to an integer but this will basically create the array with the numbers without the spaces so it reads the file reads the line and then splits it by the space so uh, after that when it's done when we have the array ready we can uh, do a for loop again and uh, i equals zero and uh, i is less than the number of elements i plus plus as always and in this case we can now uh, basically uh, output the uh, or, or call the search count but we need to create obviously the uh, uh, the object first so I'm gonna come up here where I have the constant I forgot some column anyway and um, remember they want us to do an array of objects element one will be one object element two second and element three third so I'm going to create a, uh, to create an array of objects it's just like any other array I will just create uh, I'll call it res results and it will equal to the new search count and in this case we only have one element at the moment so just to test that one I will pass the element uh, I forgot to declare element one first sorry about that so I'll do element one equals new search count and the this is the what we pass into the constructor which is the number of elements remember the search count expects the number of elements so we can instantiate the the array inside of it so that's our element one 
So I can simply now pass the first element one into our array, so and then I will be passing the the rest of them as well. So uh, so now I have the object, so it creates, it instantiates everything here. Uh, so now we have our numbers array ready, so we can pass the numbers from the text file into it. So we'll come over here to our for loop that I started. And I will do element one dot element numbers, which is the numbers array from the search count i, and I will pass the first number to it, or all of them one at a time. But like I said, we need to convert it to integer uh, because uh, this is an integer array, and uh, the line simply holds the, the string so far. So. Uh, we will pass the line of the element i to it. So this basically populates our numbers array inside of our search count with the, uh, with the numbers from the text file that were read into our variable called line. So now we have, uh, when, when that is ready, we can do, we can call the element one dot and it's supposed to call the linear search. And what is the value we're searching for? So searched value, which is at this moment 26. And I can output it right now. Uh, uh, linear search. I will output the, the count just to see how it works. So I will do console dot right line. And I will output the element one dot counter that holds the number of uh, steps that it took to read the or find the file and it should be in fact if you look at the at the numbers dot, uh, dot txt 26 is here which is number 16 so it should the count should actually have 16 so let me see if uh, that's what's going to be output All right, anytime, I suppose. And yep, the counter is 16. It found the number 26, and it took it took 16 steps to to do it. As I said, linear search is basically one number at a time, one by one. All right, so that's uh, the linear search, and in the next video we'll continue with the element two, which uh, requires bubbles ascending sorting and binary search. So stick around and watch the next video.